look at the benefits and the disadvantages of the different cell types. So what we like about adult cells is they're safe because we know where we got them. They're dedicated to do something specific so we know what kinds of cells they're going to make. So therefore they're predictable. They're ethical because you can consent or not consent to give up your cells. So they're very uncomplicated cells to use from that point of view. But that also means because they're dedicated, they have a limited use. So a photographer doesn't want to be a journalist, doesn't want to be a scientist, she wants to be a photographer. And adult stem cells are dedicated to a purpose. They've already differentiated to the point and specialised that they don't go backwards. So they have some proven indications. The best known one is bone marrow transplant. They've been in use for nearly 50 years in humans and are an effective treatment. Uh, they also used and a proven effective stem cell intervention for skin grafts after a burns and um, are very, very good for this purpose. So that's another proven use of stem cells. And they can also be used to treat leukemia, another important proven use of stem cells. What about embryonic stem cells? Well, if they can make anything, is there any downside? Well, they're limitless, absolutely, that's the upside, but there are ethical issues. So how do you obtain embryonic stem cells? Well, just to clarify, for now, all embryonic stem cells that are currently in research are, have been donated by parents that have chosen to donate um, excess IVF uh, tissue that they're not going to be using anymore that was planned for discard but they said instead of discard I would prefer to dedicate that to research. So it's a complex issue in that you might feel very uncomfortable about that and, and, and it's right to probably feel uncomfortable about that. On the flip side for parents that haven't been able to have a child and want to do something to redeem their story it's complex for them that they want to give this tissue to actually help another family. So that's where they're made from and as you saw in the videos these cells can be once one source of cell is taken, they can be kept alive and replicated in a dish for many, many years, for many, many patients. So it's not like in no circumstances is there ever a situation where babies are being harvested for stem cell use. That is just not factual. This is um, one line of cells that is being used and replicated over and over in a dish that was given by consent. But of course, that's ethically complex. The other complexity is if they can make anything, how do you stop them? How do you turn them off? Are they safe in humans? What happens if you put them in a brain? Would they just make brain cells? Would they know they're in the brain or would they make a heart as well? And so we have to be able to know and understand how to regulate these cells, how to turn them on and off before they're safe to use in humans. There are many clinical trials underway using these cells and we'll talk about that. There was a long pause for political and important moral and ethical reasons, but the uh, use is on the increase again. Then these are IPS cells. Well, if they're so magical and can copycat but have no ethical complications because they come from skin, what about could we use those? Well, we still have the same problem with them in that we don't know, just like embryonic stem cells yet, how to definitely turn them off and how to stop them differentiating into different types of cells in humans. So um, they are not being transplanted back into humans yet, but they are being used widely in research. They're perfect for disease modelling and a number of um, very important breakthroughs have come from using these cells. So, for example, in the Netherlands, where they're leading with this research, they can actually take cells from a normal patient that consents and say some, from someone with a rare cancer. They can put those cells in the dish and actually see how they respond to different drug targets and then they can advise the doctor or design new drugs or advise the doctor that this particular patient is likely to respond better to this class of drugs. And they've actually been doing these trials where uh, the stem cell scientist gets no clinical information and just runs all the tests on the cells and says, go to the doctor and, and try this um, drug and it um, been testing that match to the clinical wisdom of clinicians and it turns out it's right. So these are very, very important cells for disease modelling and also developing new drugs as well, not just implantation. So stem cells offer us lots of different ways to do research as well. And as you can see, this is um, a picture here that shows um, using iPS cells, as I said, to develop new drugs. Um, they're also being used for developing um, genetic screening and toxicology testing, what's the safe dose of things, and, and for drug development. So we think um, that there's a lot of possibility with these cells as well for telling us a lot more about how to understand disease mechanisms and what kind of treatments we might want to try. It's also going to, as the video said, lead to individualised medicine.